So this video is about my language learning goals for 2021. Generally, this video is done a little bit earlier. I know that most folks even do this video before the year started, but I wanted to go ahead and do my video after we'd already gotten into the year and kind of just sort of get, get a little bit of the lay of what the land is gonna be like for this year before I decided what my goals would be definitively. Now, of course, I had an idea of what I would be doing before uh, the year started, but again, I just wanted to sort of get the lay of the land. My main goal for this year, sort of the overarching goal, is to actually focus on languages that I've already been studying. I don't actually plan to add any new languages to my schedule for this year, as far as I know. My main goal for last year was to focus on the languages of Indonesia and languages sort of surrounding Indonesian uh, languages that are, that are related to it. Of course, that was cut short uh, due to having to evacuate Indonesia uh, due to, to COVID and my language goals kind of shifted. So I went from Indonesian being my main focus and some of the languages that I was working on, particularly in Borneo, to essentially pivoting to a language that I'd studied before in the past, which was Italian. And I'd somehow gained this renewed in, uh, interest in the Italian language, and I decided to just go with it after sort of everything, you know, was kind of thrown out with my plans due to COVID and, and whatnot, I decided, you know what, why not just go with Italian? And I think that, that was ultimately a great idea. And so for this next year, basically my focus, my, my sort of main focus, the one single language that I will be focusing on improving is Italian. In addition to uh, continuing to keep up with some of the other languages that I was working on, uh, I will also be trying to sort of move the needle a lot more aggressively with Italian. Now, of course, I believe you probably could guess that, considering that I started off this year with the Italian challenge from uh, January 1st to January 5th. Uh, go ahead and watch those videos if you'd like to see kind of how that went trying to do 40 hours of Italian study within the span of about five days. But really, I think what ended up happening for me last year, so when we got back, I was sort of looking to reorient myself in terms of my language learning. Obviously, Indonesian was no longer as, I won't say it was pertinent, but it wasn't sort of the main focus in the sense that I would be able to go out and use it every day, every single day, uh, as was originally the plan. I think all of a sudden, just finding, having the resources fall in place, becoming interested in Italian music, becoming interested in some old films that I'd watched from high school. Um, I'll do a video probably later on my Italian story so you can know kind of what my background is with Italian. Little by little, I started falling in love with the language again and so I really started dedicating time to it. And I've made quite a bit of progress so far, so I'd like to really push the needle on making progress with Italian this year. Now the next language that I will be working on this year is, of course, French. I'm a French teacher, and I need to be able to keep up my French skills as it is a part of, part of my job. One of the important things that I think we often miss in language learning uh, particularly for those that teach languages, is the importance of having adult conversations. If you are a foreign language teacher, you find yourself sort of talking to students, using that level, accommodating at that level, but in order to maintain your full-blown skills in that language, you really need to be having adult conversations and interacting with native material that is of interest to you. So that's kind of what my main thing around French will be, is simply to have as many adult interactions as I can and to engage with native material as much as I can. I'll talk a little bit about exactly what I'll be doing in just a moment, but that's kind of my main, what essentially sort of the, the atmosphere around French uh, that, that sort of will, will exist this year. The next language that I'll be working on, of course, is maintaining my Indonesian. I made a tremendous amount of progress while I was in Indonesia with the language and I would like to maintain that uh, so that when I'm able to go back, hopefully maybe um, in the summertime or maybe 
next winter or something like that. I don't think that things will be opening up all that soon for that kind of travel uh, or field work, but I would like to maintain my skills so that I can use Indonesian when I do uh, return for field work, when I am able uh, to interact with uh, people on a daily basis and, and be sort of in, in a contact setting. Also, currently language documentation for my for my current projects are happening remotely. So I do occasionally need to hop onto some sort of video conferencing platform. It could be Facebook, but it's normally WhatsApp or something like that and interact in Indonesian. I'd like to be able to have conversations, chit chat, uh, and like to be able to also carry out the work that I need to, uh, that I'm doing remotely with people that I know living uh, in, in Indonesia. The next language that I'd like to uh, work on this year is Chinese. Now this is a language that I began Quite a few years ago, I want to say it was the summer of 2017 where I really dug into Chinese. Since then, I really had to put it away and I haven't been able to really return to it just because of the time constraints. And so this year, I'd really like to dedicate some time to interacting with Chinese, but in a sustainable manner uh, in being able to learn Chinese sort of bit by bit in order to accomplish my specific goals in the language. The last sort of two I want to clump together because they are my reading languages. They are also my ancient languages. So Old English, of course, and Latin. Those are two other languages that I will be uh, working with this year. And I would like to be able to maintain my skills in those languages by doing some reading and interacting with texts in, in those languages. Okay, so you're probably thinking by now, okay, so what exactly is the plan to work with these languages, to be able to um, make progress in these languages. Well, okay, I'll start off with Italian, and I'll make a separate video that really goes into a lot more detail uh, in terms of exactly what resources and how we'll be, we'll be using those. Uh, you'll probably see some of that in the follow-up video that I'm gonna make to the challenge in just a moment, but I did want to do kind of a reflection video uh, afterwards, so that'll be coming up pretty soon. Until that comes out, um, essentially, I'm going to focus on taking an hours-based approach to language learning. I've talked about this a lot in the past. I sort of take the perspective of the foreign service that in order to become fluent in a language, socially fluent, uh, be able to sort of also use it at a level professionally, you need to basically hit a certain number of hours interacting with the language. Some of that can be grammar, some of that can be games, some of that can be conversation, some of that can be a number of different methods, but I think mostly what you're going to want to be focusing on is somehow interacting with full-blown Italian or whatever language you're working on in a capacity that is sustained over all of the hours that, that you need. So for instance, for Italian and other Romance languages, I think the recommendation is around 550 to about 600 hours. For languages like Indonesian, the recommendation is about 900 hours. For the vast majority of the world's languages, the Foreign Service recommends something, I believe, like 1100 hours. And then of course, languages like Mandarin, uh, Japanese, some of the harder Arabic, harder languages, particularly those that have very difficult writing systems, they can recommend up to 2,200 hours. I don't believe that you always need to stick to those parameters. So I, for in particular uh, around Chinese, I don't necessarily think it's gonna take me 2,200 hours to get to the level of fluency that I wanna get in in Chinese, because there's only certain things that I wanna be able to do in the language. Extensive reading and writing is not one of them. Uh, while I think it's going to be important for me to learn some characters and eventually be dealing with the writing system, I don't really aspire to read Chinese literature or Chinese philosophy. Uh, I don't aspire to really be doing lots of academic work in Chinese. Um, but it, it would be nice to be able to read menus and to be able to get around, to be able to, 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 to recognize some of the more essential uh, um, characters and do some of the most essential sort of day-to-day -day adult level reading in, in the language. So again, I'm not gonna sort of knock out dealing with the writing system at all, but I think that I'm gonna be able to shorten that sort of 2200 hour mark that 
was sent by the Foreign Service by simply taking out a large component of writing, since my focus in Chinese is actually being able to interact with people and to be able to have conversations. It's really the speaking and listening aspect of Chinese that I am interested in, and much, 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 much less so the reading and the writing. So I think I'll need to keep that in mind as I move forward with that. So coming back to Italian, I mainly plan to be using lots of material that I feel has a large component of comprehensible input. So of course you guys know that I'm using the Rosetta Stone software, which I absolutely love. I sort of take the perspective that it works almost like circling. If you've ever seen a TPRS class, I believe that is teaching proficiency through reading and storytelling. I believe that's what TPRS means. It came from sort of a total physical response aspect of, you know, sort of movement and being directed to do certain things and learning language that way. Uh, so it's very interactive, but what it mainly centers on is being able to acquire language by comprehensible input. So there's lots of circling, as they call it. They move through uh, uh, certain grammatical structures asking certain questions about the basics of a story that they're trying to unfold for you. And that's actually something that I find is a component of Rosetta Stone. Now, each exercise is not necessarily developing a story, but there is kind of a background theme or kind of almost story that's circulating in the back of its lessons. So that's for that reason I can, would consider Rosetta Stone a kind of comprehensible input-based software. Also, they have added all of the readings. They actually have uh, for each unit, I want to say something about 7 to 10 readings that you can do, and that's going to be really good for comprehensible input. If you're reading in the language, like reading these short little stories or short little articles, you're able to record yourself. Uh, reading them out loud, and you're able to also listen to them while you read uh, and pass through them a couple of times, I think that's really going to help my skills. I do believe that working with Rosetta Stone, the regular Rosetta Stone package is only about 200 hours, and I'm about halfway through it. So I probably only about, I only have maybe about 100 hours of like the core of Rosetta Stone left. With the readings, I anticipate that I could probably add on another 100 hours. But clearly, I'm going to need some other things to do in Italian if I am going to hit that 550 to 600 hours. Now, I don't know that I'm going to necessarily hit that this year. I'm mostly taking an approach to follow my linguistic, um, my maintenance mechanism, which is something that I've talked about in another video. Uh, being able to do a little bit of a language for 15 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, um, that sort of thing that's sort of sustainable. Uh, but I do plan on going a little bit more extensively into my studies of Italian than in some of these other languages. So if I can, I'd like to lop on extra time and I'm gonna need more resources for that. One of the things that I started recently was this book called 900, I believe it's called 900 Words in 30 Days. And I've been following it pretty nicely. We're about halfway, coming on halfway through the month of January and I've been pretty much doing it every day. And I think adding that amount to my Italian vocabulary is gonna be very useful. The next thing I plan on doing, essentially once I'm able to finish the Rosetta Stone package, I hope to continue interacting with the tutors, the live tutors that they have through the program, being able to get in speaking practice and working with them. But essentially after that, I'd like to engage in some more substantive, comprehensible input reading. So I actually have two textbooks in Italian that are based in comprehensible input. It's basically just like books of stories and it's got all the vocabulary, all of the things in it. And I wanna be able to work my way through those stories, learning the vocabulary, expanding, and being able to use the language that way. I hope to really just sort of dive into those TPRS uh, materials for, to get the additional hundreds of, 100, 200 or so hours that would come after that point. In addition to that, of course, I plan on continuing watching uh, actual native content on YouTube. Uh, I've been watching the news some. There's also the program Yabla that I really like. And I think maybe if I'm able to finish some of those TPRS books, I think I'd like to sort of graduate, if you will, to Yabla, where I'm watching native content and doing dictation exercises, playing all sorts of games, things that really cause me to sit myself in front of 
regular spoken Italian as messy and as wonderful it is, as it is every single day. That's kind of the progression that I can imagine over the course of this year. And I'd like to just honestly chug, chug along and mark my progress as I make my way through it, marking off each hour that I'm able to complete. When it comes to French, uh, my main thing has been to use Yabla. So that program that I just mentioned for Italian, sort of when I'm able to reach that high level, I've already started using that for French. It is amazing. Basically, it is all native content. Um, obviously, I have a fairly high level in French, so I do some of the, the more advanced videos and it pretty much is just wonderful. It's just the opportunity. You, you're watching movies, you're watching TV shows, you're watching interviews, you're watching um, a little bit more put together than sort of randos talking, but you get some of that loose, looser structure stuff as well, except that it has the, the capacity to sort of direct your learning uh, because it's not sort of in the same way that when I'm on YouTube sort of surfing, I'll watch a video and I'll watch it once and then maybe I won't ever return to it again. So it just in terms of its value, I don't sort of gain all that much from one single video in terms of pushing the needle on my language learning. I don't know that I actually learn, I may understand a lot of vocabulary, but I don't know that I actually internalize a lot of new vocabulary and that sort of thing. Yabla is a little bit different because it allows you to interact with all of those, that wonderful messiness of what is the French language, um, sort of through that, again, that native content, but it does have the structure of having games, having dictation, it has you to sort of transcribe the video so that you can actually see what the parts are, and I think that's really going to help move the needle in terms of upping my vocabulary in French and being able to maintain that high level. So that's pretty much it for French. I just want to be able to interact with all of the materials on Yabla, and of course I'll continue watching things on Netflix and YouTube as I will. When it comes to Indonesian, basically I want to be able to just do some readings every day. So uh, I went to Indonesian Pod and I was able to get a lot of the articles and a lot of the scripts for their videos and things. And so I'd like to honestly just spend most of the year reading through that. Of course, yep, right here on my desk I've got my Asimil Indonesian. Um, I want to basically just continue working my way through that. I wasn't able to finish that this past year. I think I'm about a fourth of the way through. So, you know, I'd like to chug away at that uh, um, this year. And of course, interact with people uh, on WhatsApp or Facebook and the language, being able to get some of those authentic experiences when I can. In terms of Chinese, I've basically only got, um, I was going to say I only have one game plan, but Really, I've got two main resources that I'm going to use. I'm going to be using this channel called Hit Chinese, which is a TPRS-based channel. So it's comprehensible input. There's a lady who actually gives little short Chinese lessons. They're usually around like 12 to about 20 minutes. And they are they involve telling a story and circling and moving through a specific grammatical structure in order to tell the story. TPRS is absolutely amazing, so I'd like to continue uh, using and incorporating TPRS methods in my language learning regimen. And that Hit Chinese program, I think, is going to be excellent for that. In addition to that, I am going to bring back my Rosetta Stone Chinese. So actually back in 2017 when I started working on Chinese, one of my main resources was Rosetta Stone, but I wasn't sort of able to keep up with it because it became too clunky and then if you forgot a day, it tried to sort of remind you with a revision lesson and then if you missed too many, it just added up all the revision lessons and then with the revision lessons, you weren't able to really see your progress, so I got discouraged. So luckily Rosetta Stone took away that revision uh, aspect to their language learning program and now you can just continue to make progress. However, I did get discouraged with Rosetta Stone Chinese back then. I'm hoping that it's been a couple of years now, I can bring that back and little by little work my way through some of the basics of the Chinese language. Of course, 200 hours is which is about the max of Rosetta Stone, maybe 300 with the stories. That is not nearly as many hours as you'll need to be fluent, but at least it'll keep me studying it every day. And then 
I'm thinking I'm entertaining the idea of actually joining a class maybe uh, in the fall or something like that uh, in order to really move the needle on that language. But I think it would just be fun to sort of taste a little bit of Chinese every single day uh, and be able to, to, to interact with that language. So of course I'll be working with a number of languages in a linguistic capacity. The Kayanic languages that I'm working on for my thesis, I will continue working on uh, the data that, that I've been working on for the past couple of months uh, until my thesis is done. Uh, we've also got some really cool plans for the Wahea language uh, this year, so I'd like to continue working on Wahea, and maybe I'll learn a little bit of Wahea along the way, which would be really exciting. Uh, but I think in terms of a lot of the stuff that I did in Borneo, in, in term, I think I probably won't be incorporating that so much into my language learning regimen, and I will leave that in the linguistic realm of things for most of this year. In terms of Old English and Latin, I mainly, for Latin, I mainly plan on focusing my attention on mastering certain grammatical structures that I never quite master. It's not that I never knew them or um, I don't sort of have them down, but I sometimes have to go look up things. I sometimes, it's usually one of the first things I forget. And so these are the kinds of structures that I'm gonna want to sort of on a daily basis interact with. The third declension nouns. I have no idea why, but I'd say after a few months of not doing any Latin, the third declension nouns uh, are usually one of the first things that I forget. So I'd like to actually spend most of this year focused on really internalizing, overlearning, right, as I've mentioned before, uh, and essential for language learning, overlearning the third declension Latin nouns. Um, and doing that while I interact with the language in other ways as well. Reading things, I'll be, I've got a book, in, a TPRS book uh, in, in Latin. I'd like to get some more stories in Latin and really use those materials to maintain my Latin skills. With Old English, I have got my Old English textbook, The Teacher Self, Old English. I'd like to continue sort of chipping away at that on the weekends, um, just chapter by chapter, maybe a chapter a month, really slowly, but something that has me to sort of be able to interact with Old English at least, you know, maybe once a week um, and, you know, a few times a month so that I can maintain those reading skills and maintain the vocabulary and my level in Old English. So that's pretty much it for my language learning goals. Uh, I think a lot of folks are doing quarters this year. I've decided sort of not to sort of break up my year so much into quarters. I may change my mind. Uh, but I think my main thing this year is to really focus on Italian and really, again, continue focusing on building the number of hours that I spend. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Those are my language learning goals for uh, 2021. I'll let you know sort of how those unfold over time. I'll also probably make a um, sort of an update video on how 2020 went because I don't think I really talked much about that. Uh, as well as talk a little bit about the, the Italian challenge that happened at the beginning of the year and a number of other exciting things uh, that are to come uh, for, for the rest of this year. I'm excited for 2021. All right, guys, go take down some tongues.